someone hodge just okay. hey guys i hope everybody's having a great morning so today uh, i, I want to just uh preface this by saying if you haven't gotten into this challenge make sure you go to bit.ly slash seven the number seven days show up because we're encouraging you guys to show up for yourself seven days a week on social media and by doing that what you're going to see is that it's all a numbers game. I always have believed, and I'm still a firm believer, that anybody can generate a million dollars on social media. I believe that. I believe that. Somebody type in, I, I can, because that's your affirmation. And the reason I say that is because generating money is just a numbers game, okay? Regardless of what you sell or how much is priced, if you get it in front of enough people, you, can, you have the potential to make a million dollars. Even if your product's not a good product, a million people may have bought, bought it before they realize that it's not a good product. So it's not the quality of your product that has to do with your revenue. But of course, we wish that everybody would put the best product they have available out there. It's the frequency in which you're able to convince people that your product will solve their problem. That makes the difference. So if you're listening today, if you could go ahead and share this broadcast, because I recently saw a poll of black entrepreneurs and it talked about what they needed most. And the vast majority of them said that they needed help with digital marketing and social media. So today, this is the help that you need. Uh, and you just need to make sure you're taking notes and then you're executing. That's another thing that we struggle with. We know what to do but we don't always do the things that we should be doing. So I want to open it up. Let me preface this by saying, there's no question that's off the table. I'm not sure who's moderating Periscope, but if somebody could moderate Periscope and give me those questions from Periscope as well, that would be great. I saw your hand go up, Stephanie. But let's just have a honest conversation about what is really keeping you from making money on social media. And here's the thing. People will say it's technology. I made my first $100,000 without a website. So it's not that. People will say, <clears throat> people will say, oh, I don't have the tools. I made my first $100,000 with a cell phone and a notepad. So it's not that. What is it really that's keeping you from generating the level of revenue that you need and sometimes it's personal. That was another thing that a lot of Black entrepreneurs mentioned on that survey was time management. So if it's a time management issue, let's talk about that today. But we host this masterclass every Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. And to me, if you're not making a million dollars on social media, you need to be here. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up uh, for the first question. If we're answering a question already, write your question down. One thing that does frustrate me, I'm not going to lie, is that when I make myself available to come on these platforms to answer questions, everybody is just closed mouth. And we all know, I don't know if it was the Bible or the Isley Brothers that said a closed mouth don't get fed, but it's the true story. If you're in business, there's not a day that goes by that I don't have a question that I don't have the answer to. Even as much money as I make, there's not a day that goes by that something doesn't happen or I don't have a, 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 a question about how do I grow this or how do I move this metric or how do I improve this number? There's not a day that goes by. So when I sit in an audience and there's people that can answer those questions, I open my mouth and ask, it's not a reflection on your intellect. As a matter of fact, some of the smartest people ask questions. So if you haven't already shared the broadcast, share the broadcast. But I'm going to go ahead and open it up for the first question. If you're in the Zoom room, you can go ahead <clears throat> and come off mute and ask your question. If you're watching on live stream, just type your question uh, in the chat. I'll start, Coach. So as a, as a new person in the online world or business and wanted to start something, where do I begin? I what, mean, what do I need? You start at the beginning first. And to me, the beginning is always what problem do you solve and for who? Write that down. What problem do I solve and for who? The biggest mistake I see entrepreneurs making 
is that they're trying to solve every problem for everybody. Even if you take like Dr. Nikki, Dr. Nikki is a trichologist. Of course, that's the professional that helps with hair loss. But she don't saw, even though a bald head white man could come into her office and get help, that's not who she's solving the problem for. So sometimes in order for your marketing message to really hit home, you've got to identify with what's going on with the individual you're marketing to. And the message that you send to a white man, which would be more hair club for men, your hair blowing in the wind, when you get your Corvette, cause you going through midlife crisis and you ready to leave your wife and get, that's not the same message you're gonna say to a black woman who is embarrassed that she lost her hair and she feels like she's lost some of her womanhood and she, she doesn't wanna tell people and maybe even her closest friends don't know. So it's not the product itself. There's a thousand products that will address hair loss. How will you connect with your audience to let your audience know I created this product with you in mind? And when you do that, you make more money, not less money. I am Eli said, I want to sell eBooks, can start them, but have difficulty finishing them. I need help with time management. So sis, I hope you applied for and followed through on that grant because the same way we hold other people accountable, we must have people that hold us accountable. The grant information is bit.ly slash freewomen2020. That is a mindset issue. Procrastination is a mindset issue. Fear is a mindset issue. Until your why gets bigger than your excuse. And let me start with even selling eBooks, that profit point is not high enough to free you from a job. So you need somebody to come along and help you structure something that's going to bring in more money than one ebook. Let's do the math on a million real quick. Stephanie, can you pull up a word doc? I always want to show people this path to a million dollars because it's critical. If you don't start off with a million dollars being the goal, you're going to accept whatever comes your way. If, if you have a million dollar revenue goal, somebody type me this morning because it starts with you saying, I have a million dollar revenue goal. I have a million dollar revenue goal. And that means I need to not only have that as a goal, but I need to write that down. Do I need to give you host controls? I need to write that down and say, not only do I have a million dollar revenue goal, but this is how I'm going to get there. And many of us write everything else down. You write down your children's school supplies, you write down the list of things you need to do for your man, but you will not put your money on paper. And as a result of not putting your money on paper, you get left out of the money. So write the fastest path to a million dollars. And this path may be different for everybody based on who you, on who you sell to, right? But you got to know to start off that my path is without a shadow of a doubt to a million dollars. So... If you were to sell eBooks, let's just say for $20, you got to ask yourself, how many eBooks would it take me to get to a million dollars? And if I'm correct, it's 50,000. Do the math, Stephanie. Did I get that right? Uh, somebody do the math, 50,000 times 20. Because 5,000 books would be 100,000. So you got to ask yourself, do I really have the community, the connections, and the hus for to go out there and find 50,000 people to write to buy this book from me? Okay, so let's go to the next level. Let's just say you got a $200 product. Let's say $200 product. Then I only have to sell 5,000 of those in order to make a million dollars. Now, 
if I have a $2,000 product, and this is where it gets tricky because the mass majority of you guys do not know how to create a product that costs $2,000, $12,000, $20,000, $50,000, but I do, okay? And so that goes back to sometimes you need help. But a $2,000 product, I got to sell 500 of those. Now that's more realistic. I can find 500 people. Now if my product is $20,000, I only have to sell 50. If my product is $20,000, I only have to find one person a week that will spend $20,000 with me. It's 52 weeks in a year, I take two weeks off for vacation. It's doable. But number one, you gotta be able to create the product. And number two, can I, can I teach you guys something real quick? You can stop sharing your screen, Stephanie. For those of you who've never invested $20,000 in your business, it's going to be hard for you to even fathom the fact that somebody will pay you $20,000. That's that seed in harvest. If you're hesitant to pay for others, you're not even going to be able to wrap your mind around the fact of how many people can pay you. So it starts with being able to invest in yourself. When we launched this million dollar grant initiative, and we said they got to bring something to the table, at least $1,000, at least $1,000 outside of first responders. That was a nothing number to me because I spent $189,000 last year just on payroll. You want to make a million dollars, you're going to break some bread. I sat on a panel of seven-figure earning women, and we all agreed with one thing is that in order for you to make a million dollars, you're going to spend 10 to 20% of that. So you say, well, coach, I don't have that. You start where you are. You invest a thousand, then you invest 10, then you invest 20, then you invest 40. That thousand, it's going to get you two or three back. Let's just say for every thousand, you're going to get 10 back. So you invest a thousand, you probably get $10,000. You invest 10, you probably get $100,000. You invest 20, you probably get $200,000. And that's the low ball. 10 to 20% is what you can expect to invest in team, tools, technology, and oh yes, yeah, strategy. Because y'all are out there building websites and don't know what the hell to put on them. A website is a sales tool. You out there going live, but you ain't never had a live stream class. A live stream is a sales tool. The vast majority of everything you touch in your business is a sales tool. But if you've never had anybody teach you how to sell it, you'll never know. I could take Dr. Nikki's brand right now. And in six months, I could more than likely be making at least half a million dollars in her brand. It, and I don't even know how to restore people half. They're not going to know till after they pay me either. <laughs> So at the end of the day, it's not the product. It's the methodology and will you execute. <clears throat> you got to spend money to make money. We've always known it, but we, we hesitant to do it. Questions? Y'all better get this time with me before I go. I have a question. Sure. So when you are doing a, a calendar for marketing, do you suggest that calendar be based upon um, certain events? Do you want to, I'm going to ask you, what is the number one thing you think I base my marketing calendar on? Uh the, the currency and relevancy of, of what's going on, what's going to attract people. Abs, how much money can I make by launching a particular thing in a particular season? Let's talk about that. Great question. 
Why would I, I be out here selling winter coats in July? If I go into Nordstrom's, Macy's, Neiman, I'm not going to find no winter coats. People can only buy what's relevant to them now. That's why you don't see school supplies out right now. You won't start seeing school supplies until after the 4th of July. If you ever want to know what season it is, just walk into Target. Whatever season it is, is going to greet you at the door. The Dollar Tree. Whatever season it is, it's going to greet you at the door. While well, walking to Dollar Tree, and after the New Year, I'm going to see hearts. If I walk in after Valentine's Day, I'm going to see Easter. I'm going to see clovers. If I walk in there after March something, I'm going to see Easter baskets. If I walk in there after that, I'm going to see stuff for the beach. If I walk in after that, I'm going to see school supplies. If I walk in after that, I'm going to see pumpkins. The Bible said for everything there is a season. That's biblical. Some of y'all don't know how to wrap your products in the season. See, it doesn't mean I'm going to sell something different just because Target doesn't change who they are just because it's Valentine's Day. They just change the positioning. They're still selling shirts. They're just red with hearts on them. They're still selling uh, tchotchkes. They just got hearts on them. So you're not changing who you are and what you're offering. You're just presenting it to people in a way that helps them understand the seasoning of it. Y'all, if y'all don't already know, this is multi-million dollar information that you're getting this morning to share this broadcast. This is a thousand dollar masterclass. I could easily charge every person here a thousand dollars to sit down and listen to what I'm telling you. Coach, someone, someone on Periscope wants to know how long should the process take and do you give yourself a time frame for making the million? Oh, absolutely. I give myself a time frame for everything I do. That's, it's called SMART goals. If you worked in corporate America, they're called it's specific, um, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. That's a smart goal. Why would I go out there and not give myself a goal? And even if I don't make it the first year I set a goal to make a million dollars, I didn't make it. But it made me go back and say, what did I not do right? The second year I set a goal to make a million dollars, I didn't make it. But it made me go back and say, okay, these are the things that knocked me off my path. See, along with setting that goal, you also have to have honest conversation with yourself every step along the way. What, out of all the things, what is my biggest nemesis? And hire that. If you're not good at coming up with your own marketing strategy, you should never be without a coach. If you're not good at coming up with your own sales strategy, if you can't sell your own stuff, if you can't sell you, that's why you hire me. Because I can sell you and me all day. So you hire what you're not good at. You suck at technology, hire that. But understand that technology is not sales. They will build you a website that says exactly what the fuck you want it to say. And it may not speak to anybody. They're just going to put the words in the paper. All the shopping carts is going to work. The links they're going to click through. But it's not, say, it's not sales. It's not, it's not the same. So here's the only thing. And I got to get my coffee from the door real quick. The only thing that can speed up your ability to make money faster is that you have to invest faster. I'll give you an example. So you don't just say, oh, she just saying that. She wants you to hire. No, 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 no. If I came from zero tomorrow and my clients right now will tell you, this is what I'm doing with them. I came from zero nine years ago. 
I had time to organically build my audience. If I started at zero tomorrow, there's no such thing as organically building your audience right now. I'm going to come in and I'm going to invest the vast majority of my revenue on strategy and advertising. Period. Period. I want my name to the top of the charts as being the best at what I, I, I do as quickly as possible. Period. So I'm going to hire somebody that's going to give me a strategy to do that. And then I'm going to spend money on the advertising to do that. The only two things, only two things that speed up your ability to get to that seven and eight figures is money and mistakes. Either your mistakes or somebody else's. So, so when you hire a coach, you hire me to tell you what not to do. Because yeah, I did that and it didn't work. So let me let me say you three months and $30,000. Don't do that. Money and mistakes. The more you invest on the right strategy, because some of y'all are out there throwing money down the drain, boosting your Facebook ads. That's a waste of money. It's certain things you do that are just a waste. And if you take all that money you wasted and hired a coach, not only would you save money, if they're a good coach, they're going to be showing you how to progressively grow your revenue, period. Time and mistakes, investing money, that's the only thing that increases your ability to generate a lot of revenue fast. It's not the product. Questions? So the vast majority of entrepreneurs that are here right now don't have a profit plan. A profit plan and a revenue goal are two different things, okay? A profit plan, a revenue goal is your destination. I'm getting ready to go from here to the grocery store. I know where I want to go. If you don't know how you're going to get there, that's your profit plan. And then when I tell entrepreneurs that, they say, I'm not going to go do a profit plan today. So the danger of doing your own profit plan is you don't know what you don't know. You don't know the fastest way to the money because you've never been there. If you made a million dollars before, you might have stumbled your way back if you haven't. If you haven't. You're not going to just arbitrarily figure it out on your own. We back to that money and mistakes. That's it. Questions? Jamie has a question. She says, how can I strategize for myself effectively as an independent business owner if I am part of an MLM company? You hire yourself a coach. And I will tell you, MLMs have a place. And the place for an MLM is behind your brand. Your, the MLM is not your brand. No, and let me start with this. Nobody can strategize for themselves effectively. I don't even want to show y'all the check I wrote to my last coach. And I just finished working with her the other day. And I'm finna write another check to her. So at the end of the day, nobody is, I can't, I can hold y'all's destiny all day. I can't hold mine. I can see y'all's greatness all day. I can't see mine. You can't see what you're capable of. You're too close to it. So until you hire somebody to move you out of your way, you'll stay where you are. You can make all the excuses in the world about not having the money. Go find the damn money. You find the money for everything else. You found the money for that Louis Vuitton bag. You found the money for that trip to Mexico. You find the money when it's your children. If your man was in jail, you find the money. Go find the money. I say that because I found money for years. 
I was a single parent making $25,000 a year, sending my kids to a private school that cost $25,000 a year. So ask me, where did the rest of the money come from? I went and found it. I'm a single parent with two girls in college. I pay all their tuition, all their rent, buy both of a brand new cost, finna buy them new cost for graduation. Where did I get the money? I went and found it. So if you can find it for everybody else, find it for you. Stop bullshitting. You're going to fuck around and be broke when you're 50 and 60 looking crazy, wishing you would have invested some of that money in moving yourself to the next level. It's a true story. I hear it all the time. Women that watch me two and three years and then they break a hip and they inbox me or they lose their job and, and they inbox me. And they say, coach, I should have listened to you years ago. They go get loans from the bank and refuse to get strategy. One lady said, I could have paid you. 5000 to save myself 50 And in all the bullshit you're doing, piecing and putting your business together, you could have hired me by now, been on the way to making some real money. You got to make a choice. You got to make a decision. Everybody's timeline from get, for getting there is different according to the investment you make. Somebody asked me one day, coach, they said, I want to make residual income. I want something that I don't have to work much in the afternoon and I don't have to work on the weekends. And girl, what the fuck job is that? Because even to create residual income, guess what you got to do first? You got to create the income before you can automate it. Bottom line. So guys, I'm answering your questions about uh, MLM is a multi-level marketing company. That's ISO T, Mary Kay, the beauty supply, the virtual nails, any, any brand that you don't own yourself. I'm open for questions, guys. So guys, welcome to Social Media Saturday. We do this every Saturday morning at 9.30 until y'all stop showing up. So invite your friends. If you haven't shared the broadcast already, share the broadcast. I'm open for questions about what are you struggling with, with your social media and your mark. Some of y'all ain't asked no questions, so you must be good. You, 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 you must be all right, baby. I'm, I'm going to go look at y'all's pages. I have a question, coach. Yep, I'm going to get my copy from you. I have market. a question. How do we stay consistent? on social media because you know you always got to find something to say you don't always want to be selling 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 how do you stay consistent and relevant at the same time that's a great question rose she's going to come back in just a minute for those of us who are just not oh are you so, so the truth of the matter is rose y'all look at social media as a sales machine and i don't I look at social media as a way to meet people. I look at social media as a way to uh, grow my connections. I look at social media as my girlfriends and I just come on social media and have a conversation. And most of the time, I just talk about whatever I wanna talk about that day. Because I love business, and most of the time ends up being business related. Uh, I want to connect with like-minded individuals. So a lot of people are not going to agree with what I say or how I say it. And that's okay because I don't appeal to everybody. They can beat their feet up, move around. <clears throat> and you just start there. People do business with who they know, like, and trust. If people don't know you and people don't like you, then they can't trust you and they're not gonna do business with you. Did that answer your question? It did, Coach, thank you so much. Anybody else? Don't, Y'all don't have no questions? Don't I guess they don't. I mean, this is crazy. Yeah. I, I have a lot. 
you always have questions, Coach. So how do we put all these pieces together? Because there's so many moving parts with social media. Um, how, how do we figure out how to put all of it together and have it work together? So the first thing is, once you know who you are and who you're here to serve, the rest falls into place. The biggest thing I find is that since you don't know who you are and who you serve, you can't even articulate solving people's problems. Until you can walk a mile in their shoes and really understand their emotions, their feelings, their vision for the future, their wishes for their life, you know, where they've been, the mistakes they made, then you can't move, you, you can't move them forward. Most people are out there on social media just doing shit. Don't even know why they're doing it. You doing it because you saw your girlfriend do it. But she got a whole different target audience than you. Cynthia, did you have a question? So social media is like underwear. You really shouldn't be wearing nobody else's drawers. <laughs> and you really can't copy nobody else's social media. <laughs> and the that minute so you stop true. trying to copy other people's social media and really think about what you're posting and why you're posting it, it's, it's, it's going to be crystal clear. But the better you know your target, the easier social media is going to get for you. And let, let me tell you a big mistake that people make. People think they can outsource their social media. You can't outsource your voice. Somebody can go on there and post for you, but it don't mean it's going to be relevant or engaging. So Dr. Nikki wants to know, how does royalty help with building your brand? So to me, royalty is such a no brainer because as long as you know who you serve, royalty is the tool to help you get a common ground with them. Like I told you, Dr. Nick was like, well, there's not a lot of articles about weight loss, uh, about hair loss. And I was like, people ain't finna write about that shit. You know, that's a taboo subject. But you got to think about these people that have hair loss issues, these women, they're still just women. So they like trips and they like fashion and they like food and they like all of these other things. And once you get them on your list, you could say, hey, by the way, my name is Dr. Nikki and this is what I do. And if you know anybody that's losing their hair, let, let, let them schedule a private conversation with me. But I think because most people don't understand what social media is anyway, most people don't even have a clue as to how powerful royalty is. When I first thought, saw royalty, I knew what it was because I know social media. I think until people really learn social media, they're not going to realize the benefit of having a tool that you can pay $87 a month for that's going to post on your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, in your stories. They, they have no clue. Questions. So guys, we're answering questions this morning about how do you generate a massive amount of money on social media? Okay, so can others post your social media based on your direction and maybe a plan? So other people can post for you, right? But if you don't understand social media enough to give them the vision of what to post, it's still, it's still ineffective. Let me put it this way. If you're not already making money on social media, you can't delegate it because you don't know enough to delegate it. 
every every role that everybody holds in my business, I can do myself. Somebody else can send emails on my behalf, but I'm behind the scenes saying, this is the email I want to go out. Somebody else can build a landing page for me, but I'm writing the copy. Somebody else can organize a conference for me, but it's my vision. See, as entrepreneurs, we delegate we 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 delegate the wrong things. You can't delegate your point of contact with a customer. You can't. So let me ask you guys a question. As a business owner, if you could only name three things that you would do every day, what would they be? You can only focus on three things every day. What would they be? As a business owner, you can only focus on three things every day. What would they be? Client acquisition. Client acquisition. I'm going to say this. Because every money ain't getting a client. Go all the way back and say, where's the money coming from? Where's the money coming from? That's number one. What else? Tiffany said marketing. That's Follow number two. But see, Tiffany, I'm going to go back to number one is where is the money coming from? Because if you don't have a clue as to where the money's coming from, where and what are you marketing? See, if I'm a farmer and I'm growing pumpkins, pumpkins ain't going to sell all year. If I know my money is coming from pumpkins, that tells me when I need to plant the pumpkins in order for them to be ready for Halloween. You ain't got no farmers running around selling a bunch of pumpkins in the summer. Right? So I got to have a plan for my money first. Where is the money coming from? What am I going to sell? And then number two is I'm going to sell it. I'm going to go market it. I'm going to ask people who's interested. And number three is getting on the phone with the people who said they were interested and closing them out. And everything else has to fall out from that. Marketing is email. Marketing is, is text messages. Marketing is webinars. Marketing is live stream. If 75% of your day should be, where's the money coming from? What am I going to do or say to market it? And when am I going to connect with the people that's interested? If you're not asking yourself every day, what's for sale and where's the money coming from? You got a hobby, mama, not a business. <clears throat> and that's why you have so many entrepreneurs that are not making any money because that's not the first question they asking themselves so now it's a wicked it, 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 it's this catch 22 you don't have the money to invest in getting help because you don't have a plan to make the money that you need to invest to get help because you don't have a plan to make the it just keeps going. And until you do something differently, it won't change. The number three. So profit planning, number one. Number two is marketing. And number three is sales. Actually getting in touch with the people and getting a commitment for them to buy your products, period. Question. Coach, yeah, Coach Jamie's asking. She says, I've never heard of royalty for social media posting. Can you please share the link? Yeah, you can give her the link, Stephanie. Questions?
Is there a best time to, to do social media marketing? Is there a time frame? That goes back to, do you know your client? If my client is working women, what's my best time to do marketing? Let's talk through it. Are y'all gonna come off mute and talk with me or I'm just gonna go? Let's talk through it. So if my client is working women, when is my best time to market? First thing in the morning before they go early. To work. Mm -hmm. Early in the morning. You gotta do early, early because some of them are gonna be getting them kids ready. Yeah. So early morning in the summertime is different than early morning in the spring and fall. Get them in the time there, they ain't working. Absolutely. Who said, what, what, what's that? Oh, someone said you can get them anytime now because um, nah, they not Nah, not necessarily. Not necessarily because they might not be home. online. Let me tell you what I saw. When people started working from home, I started seeing less people available in the middle of the day because these jobs is trying to keep them on Zoom to watch them. So where they were available in the middle of the day because they was in the office being watched, now they're at home and the job is calling them meeting every five minutes because they want to. So the midday availability has dried up. They're actually working more out. So you got to know your audience. You got to eat, sleep, and breathe. Your, you got to think about what she doing right now. I wonder what she doing right now, girl. She eating her lunch at home because really ain't nowhere to go out. She got all these memes, girl, because the office, they just get on her nerves. She got these kids. She trying to do their homework. That's a whole nother thing you got to throw into the equation. So if I really want to catch her, I'm probably going to have to catch her at 9, 10 o'clock. And Stephanie, that's one of the reasons y'all's midnight broadcast has been so late. Because they will stay up late because they ain't got to do their commute. They ain't got to get up as early as they would before midnight would be a little dead with early morning people because they knew they had to get up, get out, get in track. But see, you got to know your art. It's not that your product is bad. It's that your marketing is wrong. See? See how when you start yeah. to look at it that way, it changes. Go ahead, Dr. Nikki. I was going to say you're absolutely right because I'm surprised at how many emails and text messages I receive from even potential clients later at night now because they're up on the computer. They are up because they don't have to get up two hours early to get the work. That five minute commute, baby, it changes your life. So you got to know. Questions? I do have some sneak peek news. Y'all want some tea? Anybody want a little piece of tea? Look at LaDavia going to sit up. Okay. Ah, Y'all messing like me. LaDavia got so close to the screen. I thought she was going to sip out my coffee cup. So my girl, <laughs> give me my coffee. <laughs> so we're about to do, we're going to do a virtual online business boot camp. Middle of July, I think 7, 8 to 7, 15. We're going to kick it off with a buy black and pink women's online business expo where women can come on and explain about their products and services. We're gonna probably do a 24 hour blitz. And the reason we said 24 hours is because believe it or not, even at two and three in the morning, people are still watching. So we're gonna do a 24 hour blitz. We're gonna charge people $99 for their spot, which we didn't think that was overly priced. I, I thought that was fair, y'all tell me. 
Uh, we're going to give everybody 10 minutes. It's going to be like QVC. I'm going to give you guys some training on how to make the most of your 10 minutes. And for that same $99, you're going to be added to a directory that we're going to offer after it's over because people are always inboxing me like I'm the damn community memory. What was that lady's name that was, and you know I remember, but still, I want to give them something so that they can continue to not just buy black, but buy black and pink, which is a distinct difference. So we're going to do it on 7-7, um, seven, seven, which is buy black day. And then we're going to lead straight into the conference. I, uh, I'm going to be sending out a survey via email of what are the top things you want to see at this conference and build the conference around that. The boot camp, if you pay to participate in the expo, you don't have to buy a ticket to the boot camp and you get five tickets for your friends to attend the boot camp. So I thought that was fair. The boot camp is going to be pay what you want to attend. Pay what you feel it's worth. And all of the expo participants, I expect for them to uh, help market the conference. So we'll ask the great question. What do y'all think? Y'all think that's a great idea? So we'll have the information out next week. The spots are probably going to go really, really fast. So as soon as I get it, I'm going to come live and let you know. I'm going to send out an email and let you guys know we're going to get you guys badges. We want, we want it, we want a packed house, right? Because now is the time that, and I'm not going to limit participation by product. You know, a lot of times it'd be like only this many jewelry, only. Baby, bring what you got because we've got to understand that there's more than enough for everybody. That's the first lesson we got to learn is that it's not a competition. It's a collaboration. And that I may have the same product as somebody else, but you may buy from them because you like the colors more, you like them more or whatever. But God's got enough for all of us. Oh, Will said, what's the best way to plan out and maximize your day week uh, how much do you typically allocate to planning your daily, weekly, monthly? <laughs> Stephanie, do you want to answer that? Typically, um, we take um, Sundays. Usually Sunday is our planning day. And you sit out and you map out what it is that you're going to do for the week. But you look at the whole year, uh, always uh, before the year begins. Um, you want to take a glance at what it is that what are you going to offer your target market and what days you're going to promote year round but then by week you're able because it, you're focused now at that point now you're able to take each week um, and chunk it down to exactly what you're going to market so it actually under supervision or with a coach who will train you and teach you how to do it it doesn't take long. Within 45 minutes to an hour, you'll have your whole week planned out day by day. You can even have your month planned out. Just spending you can even a little have time. Your quarter planned out. Like there's literally not a month that you can't ask me what I'm going to be marketing that I don't know. True story. So let's let's talk about what that what that looks like. Because when your profit is your guiding light, if that's your beacon, in order for you to have a profit plan, you got to break that profit plan into what am I going to make for the year? What am I going to make by annually, quarterly, monthly, and weekly, and daily? And if the truth be told, most of us, the mass majority of us, don't make it to a million dollars because we get caught up in the details. You know, they say the devil is in the details, especially women. So we're running around doing $2 projects and focusing on $2 items instead of spending our time focused on the $20,000 items. They're gonna get us there close. One of the, and, and time management is like that 
across the board. And again, this is Million Dollar Information, D. Morris said. If you haven't shared this broadcast, make sure you share the broadcast and bring somebody else into the conversation. So I, I, I tell this story all the time as it relates to time management. There was a professor who went into his class and he was carrying a very large jaw. And he set the large glass jaw down. He took out a bag of tennis balls and he filled up the jar. And he asked the class, is the jar full? And they said, oh yeah, it's full, professor. So he, he took out a bag of marbles and proceeded to shake the marbles between the tennis balls. And he asked the class, is the, is, is the jar full now? And they said, yes, professor, the jar is full. So then he proceeded to take out a bag of sunflower seeds and shake them between the tennis balls and the marbles. He asked the class, is the jar full? And of course, they said, yes, it was. He took out a bag of sand, whole bag of sand, and was able to pour that whole bag of sand into that jar that already had marbles and sunflower seeds and tennis balls. And he asked the class, is the jar full now? They said, yes. He took out a bottle of water and poured it into that jar. Most of y'all are putting your water into your jar first. Your tennis, your tennis balls is your profit plan. Your tennis balls are your marketing plan and your tennis balls are your sales. If you get them in there, everything else will make time to fit. But if you fill it up with water, then you messed up before you started. I always, when I'm working with my team, I call it your big five. And every month I say, what's my big five? One month it may be get my taxes done start this new business incorporate. I, this month is to become a, a woman owned, minority owned, owned certified business. I created, uh, to finish the creation for my nonprofit, I created another new business and to get their infrastructures up and running. Those are my big five. If I get them done, everything else will fall into place. Y'all are running around chasing your tail sometimes and not really holding yourself accountable to what matters. If I say my goal is to make $100,000 this month, I know come June 1, I got to hit the ground running. Where am I going to get the money from? And so that means every day that clock is ticking on that $100,000. A lot of you can't handle it. You let yourself off the hook. Instead of saying, I'm going to make myself I'm going to make myself a $100,000 goal and I'm going to go do whatever is necessary to make those goals. So if you don't start with the big stuff first, you'll never have stuff. You'll never have room for the small stuff. Questions? <laughs> so guys, I didn't learn this stuff overnight and my mentees don't either, but they hear it from me so often. And that's what you have to remember is that Coaching is not a class. Coaching is a relationship. And when you hear the same things over and over in everybody's spirit, 
takes different time to move because your spirit got to move toward that money before your body do. Your mind has to understand in totality that 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 arbitrary number on that paper that could be your that could be you got to get comfortable with having money. You do. Coach, that is so true because that when you're not used to it and you, you're living from hand to hand, paycheck to paycheck, when you do come and it just, you don't know how to handle it. Your mindset's not where it needs to be. To well, even. that's why so many football players, so many lottery winners revert back to that old mindset, and that old behavior. And so regardless as to, it's not about how many millions passes through your hands. Right? It's about how many are you able to retain. And so a lot of us have the disposable income to hire a coach, but we're not keeping it. And then what happens is we wait until all hell breaks out. And now we're in financial distress. So realize I should have been head of coach and been doing what she told me to do all along. And then it's not going to get better until you say, I'm going to commit and submit to the process. And guys, let me tell y'all something, just, just in a hundred percent transparency. It's some days I look at my bank account and I'd be like, shit, them people finna come get me. <laughs> them folks is about to come get me, y'all. I, and I was telling one of my clients this the other day, she was like, coach, I have so much money in my bank account. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to spend it because I feel like if I spend it and I said, well, okay, so let me tell y'all because y'all don't know the story behind the Hennessy bottles. For those of you that don't have never been to my house, and a lot of y'all have, and you see this massive collection of Hennessy, collectible bottles from all over the world, Australia, China, France, Europe, you name it. The bottles range in value from 300 on the low end to about 10 or 15,000 on the high end. I, it, the collection is probably, it's probably worth over $100,000, but it would take you two trucks to get the shit out of here. So don't try to come to my house and break in. Just FYI. You're going to break more bottles, especially when Mr. Start busting at you. You're going to break all them bottles trying to get away. But when he pop, 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 just FYI. Because he, he going to shoot first and ask questions later. Understand it. Be clear. He love to stay in your ground law. He love it. So the bottles came from my mindset. And when I first started making a lot of money, I would always say, I would always think that I couldn't afford certain things. And so I would go buy these expensive eclectic bottles as proof to myself that I could afford anything. And that's why so many bottles, that's how many times I've had to prove to myself my value. And that, that's my breakthrough. So you have to find a way to break the spell. It's almost like we have a money spell over us that doesn't allow us to earn too much or save too much or go too far. So you've got to, number one, talk about it. And number two, you've got to find things that will, that you can invest in, including yourself, to break that, to break that spell. If you say, I can't afford coaching, you can't. And you never will be able to. If you say, I'm going to go find the money and I'm going to make the commitment every month, you will have the money. So we are a victim of our own mouths and our own thought process, first and foremost. Yeah, Priscilla says, so true. Uh, your mind has to hold money before you can hold it in your hand. Oh, absolutely. And once, and, and, and you know, it's a progression too. You don't get to a million overnight. 
you know, I got to my first hundred thousand. When I made my first hundred thousand dollars in a, a year for myself, I was already making that in corporate America. But when I made it for myself, that was a shift. That was a, oh, you really can make this money. So I refused to get comfortable with that. So when I made the first quarter million, that was a shift. When I made my first $10,000 sale, that was a shift. When I made my, when I had my first day, that I made $100,000, that was a shift. When I had the first time I made $160,000 in a launch, that was a shift. You know, you had that, when I had the first day I made $150,000 in one day, that was a shift. So you don't shift all at once. It is a series of success along the way, planning, execute, success that gets you to the point. I said it, I'm committed. I just birthed a company and I said, I want one corporation, one company to write me a million dollar check this year. That's my goal. One company write me one million dollar check. Now I'm gonna have to disperse it to some people to get some work done. But at the end of the day, your earning capacity, if you're not working to graduate what you feel like you're worth, you stay at that $10 an hour mindset. I remember when I used to make $2, I think, and 82 cents an hour. When I first started working, I was 15. I worked at a grocery store. I think I made $2.82 an hour. So if you don't fight that $2.82 an hour mentality, that's who you're going to always be. questions so guys if you haven't already applied for our one million dollar grant to help you build your business and and just so you know the difference it is a difference between that program and being in the mentorship but it's somewhere for you to start make sure you go to bit.ly slash free women 2020 and get your name in the hat Will said, do you ever have anxiety? Who doesn't? I remember, um, what's her name from Empire? Cookie. Hey, what's going on? How y'all been, girl? I'm all right. What about you? I remember uh, Taraji talking about uh, how stressful she is. And Charlemagne has a book called Shook. And he talks about anxiety. So what you have to realize is that the more success you have, the more stress you're going to have. You think you have anxiety now, you think you're scared now, the higher you go up and you really have somewhere to fall from, it, it, it does. It does create an immense amount of anxiety. Because number one, you have, you've set a precedent for yourself. And I think it was Thomas Jefferson that says, once the mind is expanded by new ideas, it can't go back to its previous way of thinking. Once you know what you're capable of, you can't go back. So a lot of you guys are saving yourselves because you don't really want to be that accountable for making the money. You're making up lies and you're making up stories about where you are now and you're feeding yourself mistruths and you're making a whole bunch of BS excuses when the truth of the matter is you've not moved because of you. It's just a hard pill to swallow. And as a result of my lack of movement, whatever happens to me is also my fault. And that's an even more bitter pill to follow. So I think everybody has anxiety, but here's how you manage it. 
I would rather be stressed about having money than stressed about being broke. I'm going to say that again for the cheap seats. I would be rather be stressed about, oh my God, I, I got all this money. It's stressful. Then, oh my God, I can't pay my light bills. Oh my God, I can't pay my phone bill. Oh my God, I'm about to be put out. You know, they started putting people out the other day behind COVID. That was the last, I think June 3rd, the moratorium was up. So June 4th, they started putting people out. I don't need that kind of stress. So if you ever get overwhelmed, if you really just start comparing the two and saying to yourself, I'd rather have this stress than that stress, it makes this easy. This has been amazing, Coach. I don't think people really realize the information that you're imparting right now to them um, and that um, you're here for them to ask, answer any questions that they may have you know, out there in their mind on how to get started and where to begin and what tools I need and, um, and offering them a community that can support them and guidance and wisdom so that they don't make the same mistakes. Um, if you have questions, guys, you need to answer them because we're going to wrap up. But um, this, I'm telling you, you're getting this free 99 right now, and, and it is worth more than a million dollars. This knowledge right here is worth more than a million dollars. If that's your goal, if that is your, your money number, you need to take heed, you need to be listening. Hopefully you've been taking notes throughout uh, this broadcast. If you're just now joining, please watch the re uh, replay because you're going to get all kinds of nuggets um, throughout this broadcast. But this has been amazing, Coach. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. Thank you for your questions today. We appreciate you. Uh, we will check in with you guys later tonight. Have an amazing Saturday. I'm looking forward to the conference. It's called Pink and Paid. Hashtag pink and paid. And we're gonna be uh we're gonna be encouraging individuals to not just buy black, but to buy black and pink. Talk to you guys soon.